My name is Amber Johnson. I'm a teacher at Liberty Middle School and I teach 8th grade language arts, honors and regular, and creative writing for 7th and 8th grade. Uh, for the past three weeks we've been reading short stories in language arts and we've read The Landlady and The Monkey's Paw and The Telltale Heart. So we're getting ready to complete our unit so we're kind of getting to the point to where we're doing more discussions of how each of the stories interact with each other. So for today's lesson I wanted to focus on a lot of analyzing and evaluating of the three short stories but I wanted to do it in a way that it wasn't whole group. So for my before strategy I used uh, five word prediction and for my during strategy I used Think Inc and for my after strategy I used Magnet Summary. At the beginning of this lesson I started with a five word prediction so for their bell work I said uh, create a statement, a prediction of what we're going to do today, what you're going to learn today using these five words. So I listed five words. Um, there was obviously I knew there was a relationship between the five words but they didn't exactly know. And so that's how I started. I gave them an index card um, and they wrote that prediction on the index card and then we actually put it away until the very end and we got the index card back out for my after strategy. For the after strategy, we went back to the index card and on the, on the other side of the index card, they went back to those five words and they wrote a summary of what they learned today. So I was very careful not to say, um, what did you do today in class? I made sure that when I asked them the question, I said, I want you to create a summary of what you learned today using these five words. So they actually use their before strategy as their after strategy because I know a lot of times after strategies um, are rushed because you run out of time at the end of the day. So I made sure that I connected my before and after so they could just go back to that before strategy. They already have the five words written down and I could look at that summary to see, okay, did they understand anything that we just did or were they completely off base or are they understanding the relationship between the literary devices and how it affects mood or how it affects the theme and that kind of thing. So. I kind of use that as my formative assessment at the end of the lesson to figure out tomorrow what I'm going to need to do. Am I going to need to review these or am I going to need to focus on a specific one? I noticed uh, students kind of struggled more with one particular station than others. So I can go back and look at those summaries to see, all right, is this where they're struggling or, oh, they've nailed this, they've got this. So for Think Inc, what I did is I had five different stations and I had five different topics that I really wanted the students to delve into and to really understand and I knew that I didn't want to do this in a whole group setting. So I created five different prompts for them to look at uh, for five different topics and I divided up the students. So each student was, each group was at a station and they had time to dive into that particular uh, prompt and that particular skill and then after a certain amount of time I would ask them to rotate and so they would rotate through all of the stations and each time that they would rotate they'd have the opportunity to look at what the other group has already written and so they could feed off of that so they could agree with that they could disagree with that they could add text evidence, they could add a connection, they could ask a question. So they were feeding, even though they were in smaller groups for collaborative work, they were actually interacting with everyone in the classroom because at some point or another each student would be at that group, at that station, talking about that topic, whether it's talking out loud to one another, writing it down, organizing, whatever it may be. I did Think Inc. because I really wanted to focus on higher order thinking skills and I didn't want to do it in a whole group setting, so I wanted to do it in a way where they felt less pressured to give me the right answer. So I created a lot of higher order thinking questions. You'll notice on the sheets there's a lot of prompts for analyzing, explaining, evaluating, comparing, contrasting. And so each particular piece of paper had a different higher order thinking question on it and I actually gave them active reader steps. So underneath each higher order thinking question were steps to help them get to the answer. Because one thing I feel like my students shut down if they read the question and the question's long, or I read the question, I don't know what the word evaluate means, they're gonna shut down. And so to help them not shut down, I gave them steps, very easy steps. So if one was, um, explain how the settings impact the progression of 
mood in the story. So when they see explain how the setting impacts the progression of mood, they may shut down with all of that academic language. So step one was define setting. Step two was identify the setting in the story. Step three, define mood. How do you find out what a mood is? And so I gave them smaller steps into which they could break down that higher order thinking skill. So I actually used some verbs like define, identify, describe, connect, to help them get to that higher order um, process that we all want our students to, to get to regardless of their level. Um, this strategy is particularly good for small groups because it lets students have the freedom to get to the right answer in a way that they want to. And by, what I mean by that is that I let them use markers to write on the chart paper. I let them use post-it notes if they'd rather, rather write on the post-it notes. Some of the groups created um, a Venn diagram, a triple Venn diagram on theirs. Some created a chart. So in order to get to that higher order thinking skill that we wanted them to get to, this gave them the opportunity to collaborate with each other. To, so if they weren't sure, I don't know what impact means, I don't know what mood means, I don't know what character motivation means, they had the people in their small group to help them figure that out. Um, they had their devices that if they needed to use their device to look up a literary term that they didn't know, they could use their own device for that. And then it just gave them a kind of a smaller, more intimate setting to try to come up with these answers. And they're not so worried, like, am I putting the right answer? Am I putting the wrong answer? Because the whole point of higher order thinking is we're getting them to think. So it's not like there's a correct way to analyze a setting. And they can get to it however they want to get to it as long as they get there. One thing that I do use when I'm doing group work, whether it's collaborative group work, small group work, whatever it may be, is my cup strategy. And so I give the students four cups. And at the very beginning of the year, um, we talk about the cups and what each one stands for. So uh, green means everyone in the group is good to go. Yellow means that we kind of have a question, but it's not stopping us. So if, if Ms. Johnson can come and help us when we get an opportunity, but we're not stuck stuck. Red means we are stuck. It's urgent. We need your help. We can't move forward. And blue means everyone in our group is finished and we are ready to move on to the next task. So I really like using these cups because um, it helps me for classroom management and it helps me not have students just sitting there waiting for me and just raising, you know, sitting there with their hands raised waiting for me to get there. I love Think Inc. because number one, they're standing up. So they're moving and they're rotating. So they're not just sitting at, some people, could do group work and they're sitting in a group. My desks are set in groups, but they're actually moving. So I really like that because engagement, it keeps them awake, it keeps them moving. I also like it that they don't immediately ask me a question. So as far as classroom management and for students who are struggling, they have their peers to help them, as opposed to if they were doing it by themselves or um, me one-on-one -on -one with me. So I do like that. What I would figure out though is like using our, my summary cards, my after strategy, I can tell individually which students aren't understanding which topic. So even though we did collaborative group work today and they were working together, at the end of the day that's, that card, that after uh, summary, the magnet summary will tell me, okay, this individual isn't understanding this concept. So even though it was group work, at the end of the day I still can see individual progress. So just from looking at the assessment, the formative assessment at the end of the block, the cards that they gave me for the magnet summary, I can already tell from this particular one that they focused on mood impacting the setting and they really talked about the relationship of settings, but I'm looking at the card and I'm realizing they're not mentioning theme at all, they're not mentioning character motivation at all. So just from her card, I can see that that's something that I'm gonna to need to focus on. She obviously has setting impacting mood, but does she have setting impacting theme or character motivation or anything like that? So that's kind of where I would go from here, is do a small group instruction, put her in a group where students need more on theme. I think for teachers who are trying strategic teaching for the first time, it can seem overwhelming because of 
how many strategies are out there and people get stuck on having the before, during, and after. I started out with just befores and I spent the entire semester just doing a before and making sure that, figuring out which befores I liked, which ones worked for the language arts classroom, which ones didn't, because what works for the language arts classroom may not work for the math classroom. So really just figuring out what, what, what can I tailor to fit my room. And then I actually went from before and then afters, and I focused on my afters after that. And so I would just encourage people not to try to do before, during, and after all the time. It's probably not going to work. I would also say to just pick your top three that you like and keep doing those. I mean, you're going to have some that you don't like. You're going to have some that totally fail, and that's, to that's fine. I, I have had multiple opportunities where I've tried strategies, especially during strategies, and they just didn't work. And so I just put that one to the side, and I'll re revisit it later if I want to revisit it. If not, I know that, hey, there's so much more out there that I can try, and that's all I can do is try.